So the reel has been swapped out. I was hoping to do this all in one video, but after I filled up a 128 gig SD card, yeah, that's not happening. So this is now a multi-part series. This is the first video in that series. We're gonna talk about when you should replace your reel. In this video, we're gonna cover when to replace the reel. We're gonna look at the old reel and the new reel side by side. We're gonna look at disconnecting the cutting unit from the drive unit, as well as we're gonna go over the differences between the cutting unit I have and a newer model cutting unit from the Flex 21s. There are differences between my cutting unit and the little bit newer cutting units. So we're gonna look at those and this will show you how to quickly and easily identify whether or not you have an older one like myself or a newer one. So enjoy. Probably wear shoes while you're doing this. Okay, the time has come. Out with the old, in with the new. So these reels from the manufacturer have a five inch diameter. That is their new life. Their service life is when the diameter reaches 4.5 inches. I went ahead and took some string, wrapped it around to measure this. Then I measured this just because this one was right at five inches. This guy here was like 4.57 inches in diameter, so definitely at the end of the service life. There are several types of reels that Toro produces. They have a traditional kind of a radial reel. They have a tapered forward swept reel, a tapered radial reel, and then a scalloped forward swept reel. The scallops are referring to this little scallop right through here that little curved section and then the taper is of course the, the angle of the blade so on this one here looking at the cutting surface and the reel is dirty that's a pretty wide gap that's probably two 2.5 millimeters now coming over to a new one here you can see the scallop more pronounced and it may be hard to see but Toro recommends their reels be relief ground so there's two types of grinding there's just your spin grind which would produce a completely flat surface this small small section that's less than a millimeter is the first relief then this wider section here is the secondary relief the reason for that is simply efficiency the less area that comes in contact with the bed knife, the more efficient the mower will be. All this is about efficiency to save fuel, to have the least amount of impact on the environment as possible. So definitely always do a relief grind with a secondary relief regardless. That also allows you to backlap. A spun ground reel, you cannot backlap. It just causes too much friction and destroys your bed knife super fast. Here, we just remove these two 18 millimeter bolts that hold the cutting unit onto the drive unit. Now a trick here though, you need to have something I have that stool to hold this because it will tip backwards and it will fall over. And we don't want that. So with that in position, we just gently remove and see, look at this guy. He's wanting to fall over already. Oh, but it got caught. No, it didn't. Then you just slide it out and bam, cutting unit is out. Boom, here we are. Cutting unit is on the workbench. We are ready to begin. I've printed off the service manual. It was a whole, whole lot of paper. Put that laser printer in for a good, good workout. I've reviewed it, got an idea of where I need to go. 
This is one of the original cutting units, and then they've kind of refined that. Like my serial number begins with a 250. You can estimate that this is a 2005 model mower. Based on that beginning, the 25 would indicate a 2005 typically. The newer cutting unit, I want to say, was introduced around 2008 or 2009. I'm not exactly 100% sure, but it's one of those two years. The easiest way to tell if you have an older cutting unit like I have or one of the newer ones is with the rear roller. So I'm going to flip this guy over. These right here, these are the adjustment brackets for the rear roller. If yours looks like this, you have the older style cutting unit. They changed them with the newer ones to make it, I guess, a little bit easier. This one here is a little bit tricky because you have to level this rear roller. So that's how you tell if you have a newer or older cutting unit. This process will be very, very similar for both styles. However, there will be some differences, so I do recommend finding the service manual if you are not a member of the lawnforum.com sign up and go there because the service manuals are there because they're hard to find on older units toro does not have them on the websites any longer okay so we took a look at my reel the old one and the new one side by side and we saw why it needed to be replaced the old one reached the end of its service life one thing I didn't go over was the blade differences in the reel. The old one was an 11 blade reel. My new reel is an eight blade reel. There's a very, very good reason for that. And it's all about after cut appearance. We're gonna dive deep, deep into that once I get used to using the groomer so we can go over the grooming and after cut appearance and how to troubleshoot that. We also got the cutting unit taken off of the drive unit and moved up to the workbench where I was able to show you what my cutting unit looks like, particularly with that rear roller and how it's changed from my older style to the newer style and that you will have to pay attention to which one you have when you go to replace your reel because there are differences and those differences are actually pretty substantial. In the next video, we're gonna go ahead and start the disassembly. We're going to take the bed bar out and remove the reel. So stay tuned for that one. I've created a playlist specifically for this process. That way you can reference back. Each video will be in there and added as soon as I get done with them. So I hope you all enjoyed this. Things are gonna get greasy. So stay tuned. And please like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you know when the next one drops. We'll see you again really, really soon to get this project underway.